that retired for a little bit? Yes. Yeah. What do you have like to eat? Gravy. Gravy. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat gravy. <laughs> I'm excited. This has nothing to do with it. I was just curious. Uh, so how how do we get to heaven? Anybody know? All right.
Heavenly Father, we come again counting our blessings and remembering who you are and what you've done for us. We have to ask you to forgive us for sometimes we're not very thankful people and we just take things for granted. We assume that you'll give us another day to live, that you'll provide us food to eat and a safe place to call home, that we'll have our faith, our, our health, that you'll always be there, that we'll have the modern conveniences that we have every day. Forgive us, Lord, for every day. We take most of these things for granted. We don't miss them until they're taken away. So we come during this Thanksgiving season as your thankful and grateful people. In addition to being thankful for all that we have physically and materially, we thank you for what we have spiritually. For many of us who are raised in the church, we've heard and accepted for ourselves your gift of salvation. We've asked you to come into our lives and you have. We know that there are other church people there that will always be there for us. They want to lead and show us the way. So we pray that you will continue to give them opportunity, that you'll continue to enable us to study and learn from your word, that we'll be the witness that you want us to be, that we'll continue to remember that you have forgiven us and given us grace, and that you've taught us how to pray. So we pray not only for ourselves, but we pray for the needs of so many others that we're aware of, family and friends. We pray for our church and our leaders. <clears throat> we pray for those who are lost and lonely. We ask that you continue to give us opportunity to be the people that you're calling us to be. Remind us that you are wanting to use each one of us as a mentor to someone who may just be getting their spiritual life and journey. Help us to be there for them as those were there for us so long ago. So as your thankful people, we come again today and as you hear us giving our thanks for everything that we have from day to day, we ask again that you hear us as we pray. We ask that you teach us how to pray, <clears throat> teach us through the model that you gave the early disciples so long ago. When they asked you to teach them how to pray, you said use this model and pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And it is not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you see, our scripture lesson is from the 17th chapter of Luke, and I would like you to read the lesson with me, please. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? There was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner. And he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And may it become alive in all of us today. I have two questions for you today. The first is how thankful are you? And what are you thankful for? History tells us back in 1789, the first national celebration of Thanksgiving 
was observed in honor of the creation of the United States Constitution. On November 26th, it was to be a day of public thanksgiving, recognizing the role of providence in creating the new United States. We need to be thankful for our country and the freedoms that we have, but as we know, there are so many other things that we need to be thankful for as well. Unfortunately, statistics show that a majority of people are not very thankful. I can remember the time uh, my parents said to me when I received a gift from someone, what do you say? You're supposed to say, thank you. Eventually, I learned. I was taught that sometimes the more things change, the more things stay the same. And that's true even today as we read as far back as what happened in our scripture lesson. The lesson teaches us that there is always reason to give thanks. But so often, so little is given. There's no excuse for being unthankful. But Americans, I have read, love to make excuses. They don't often admit that anything is their fault. Everyone, they say, in prison is innocent. <clears throat> and they're innocent because it was someone else's fault. If you grew up with a younger sibling, as I did, perhaps when you got in trouble, you said, as I did, it's not my fault, it's my brother's fault. He did it usually didn't work. Some of you will remember the lawsuit filed by the woman who spilled coffee from McDonald's on her lap. She sued the company. She won thousands of dollars. Her attorney said it wasn't her fault. Although, she was the only one in the car. She spilled coffee on herself. She still said it wasn't her fault. And McDonald's, as we know, had to pay. we can go to the scripture. We remember the story of Adam and Eve. You remember God told them not to eat of a certain fruit. Both of them did. And you have a picture of them perhaps facing God. And God approaches Adam and says, what happens? And Adam says, in essence, not my fault, God. It's that woman's fault that you gave me. And so he turns to Eve. What happened? Not my fault, God. The devil made me do it. God doesn't buy their excuses, as we know. And both of them have to pay. And even today, when we sin, there's consequences. In the scripture today, there are ten lepers who are healed, but only one returns to give thanks. The author says of the nine who didn't return and give thanks, perhaps they had an excuse for not returning. One writer I read wrote rather humorously that their excuses might have gone <clears throat> something like this. I'm not sure if the healing is going to last, so I'm just going to wait and see. The second one said, I'll thank him later. I want to wait to make sure it's real. The fourth one said, I'm healed, but maybe I didn't have leprosy in the first place. The fifth said, no big deal. I would have gotten better eventually. The sixth said, I gave glory to the priest. The seventh said, Jesus really didn't do anything. Another proclaimed that the rabbi could have done it. The ninth said, I'm already much improved. We know there is no way of knowing what they thought or what they said. But we know human nature. And we know that people always have love to make excuses. When one returns, Jesus asks, where are the other nine? And I guess we have to ask ourselves on any given day, Am I that one who returns and gives thanks? Or am I 
one of the nine forgetting how thankful I need to be. The St. Petersburg Times printed a list of what some local children were thankful for a number of years ago. And their list went something like this. Andrew, who was 10, said, I'm thankful for my family because they love me and give me food. Victoria, who was nine, said, I'm thankful for flowers and trees. And I'm thankful for our van that takes me to the mall. Ryan, seven, said, I'm thankful for little squirrels. And Maria, five, said, I'm thankful for Thanksgiving because I get to eat turkey. Anastasia, <laughs> 10, said, I'm thankful that my brother is in remission from leukemia. And Natalie, the scholar and the writer of the group, said, I'm thankful for Thanksgiving because it's a happy holiday. It's when families get together and have a time celebrating God's goodness. The pilgrims are a good example to me because they knew that no matter how hard things got, God is always with you and will provide for your needs. <clears throat> and when God provided for them, they did not forget Him, but praised Him with thanksgiving. I'm impressed with her answer because she gets it. God wants us to be thankful in all circumstances. And when we think about it, we always have something to be thankful for. We have the love of our God. We know what Christ was willing to do for us on the cross. We know that every day we should be thankful people. But we also know that God didn't stop there. He continues to bless us every day. Sadly, we take so much of it just for granted. An article I found on the internet goes something like this. If you have food in the fridge, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, a place to sleep tonight, you are richer than 75% of the people in the world today. If you have money in the bank and money in your wallet or purse, spare change in your pocket, you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you are blessed more than millions who will not survive the week. If you've never experienced the danger of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pains of starvation, you are ahead of over 500 million people in the world. If you can attend church meetings without fear of harassment, arrest, torture, or death, you are blessed more than three billion people in the world today. We are blessed people. We have so much to be thankful for. And as Christians, we need to be setting the example of what it means to be thankful. But a George Gallup poll reported that 84% of Americans who claim to be Christian, of those 84%, only 10% are deeply committed to Christ. But in that 10% group, they are far more happy than the rest of the population. <coughs> They're more accepting of others. They're involved in charitable activities. They're absolutely committed to being a person who believes in the power of prayer. But 74% who profess to be Christian know little or nothing of Christian beliefs, and they act no differently than non-Christians. There's an obvious problem with that picture. We are called to be set apart in the world, but so many are not. <clears throat> It's no surprise that people have not changed. Back in the day of Jesus, 10 are healed, but only one returns to give thanks. We are to be setting the bar when it comes to things like love and kindness and gentleness and forgiveness and thankfulness. We need to be more consistently thankful. So I encourage you, as I encourage myself, 
to look at 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. We urge you, brothers and sisters, it writes, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. And then it says what I really don't want us to forget or miss. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God desires for us to always have an attitude of gratitude. And if we will, He'll be able to use us as an example to the world that we live in. So may we use this Thanksgiving season <clears throat> once again to count our blessings, to name them one by one. Because if we do, it will surprise us what God has done. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we don't have to think very long or hard before we realize <clears throat> of all that is going on in the world today that we are really blessed. So help us each day when we get down to stop, to take some time and to count our blessings. Because if we do, we'll realize what you have done and what you are doing in our lives.